our next speaker. Um, I stumbled across, that's probably the way to put it, about six months ago or so, and uh, I invited her to join me on uh, an episode of Humanity vs. Insanity. And then, um, coincidentally, we were speaking at uh, the same event in Ireland about three months ago or so, which was an, an event organized by Trevor. Where's Trevor? Is he here? No, he's just there. Okay, so I can talk about <laughs> I can talk about him. Trevor, Trevor Evers, he was uh, brave enough <laughs> to uh, put on a similar event in Waterford in Ireland. And um, it was his first event. I think I had about 120 people there or so. So it was a fantastic event. And I got the opportunity to listen to uh, Judith and to obviously to speak with her. And in fact, the presentation that she delivered in Ireland, um, she's going to uh, share with us tomorrow morning. Because Judith Berry Baker has a very interesting background. And I'm not going to steal uh, any of her thunder, but simply to share that uh, in her um, adolescent youth, um, she was the girlfriend of um, an individual by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald. And uh, so she's going to be sharing her experiences of, of that uh, and subsequently tomorrow morning. But the reason that she was in that position in New Orleans was because as a child protege, she had a unique expertise and uh, a unique interest in biochemistry. And uh, so there's a subject that I haven't heard her speak about. We touched upon it a little bit in the discussion on humanity versus insanity. But that's why I asked her to do this presentation first, because you know, I really want to hear this. And so her subject today is weaponized cancer. And I think we are all aware of the phenomenal increase in the prevalence of cancer in recent years. And obviously it's put down to a number of things. And of course, as we know, there's only two ways to cure it, right? Radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Which of course absolutely guarantee that you're gonna die anyway, as we know. But let's go back to the source here and let's hear the story from the 19, well, early 1960s. So please welcome Judith Ray Baker. Thank you. All right. Can you hear me? Can't hear me. Is that better? Okay. I wish I could hide. <laughs> Never intended to, um, to show off my bumps just like these mice. <laughs> but what must be, must be. Um, I feel my life was preserved. When I was in New Orleans, I was Judy Very, working on a weaponized form of cancer to kill Fidel Castro. There were 186 at least attempts on Castro's life by the CIA. And they don't tell you about the most important ones. They tell you about exploding cigars. Exploding seashells. Uh, botulism in a diving suit. Bazookas. But the value of the cancer was that it wouldn't have to be blamed on the United States. It's natural. Right. All right. Um, I'm going to try to use this little gizmo here. We're looking at, let's see if this is working properly. Just a moment, please. Got to turn it on, I guess. OK. Oh, it's on the ceiling. I have extremely bad eyes, folks. So, okay, here we go. I want you to look at these uh, photographs here for a minute. Cancer is all over the place. This is a plant cancer. It's caused by a bacteria that irritates the plant so much that it produces cancer, and then it can live inside the tumor. This is cancer in a steak. The, the Animal has tried to protect itself by putting a lot of fat around these nodules. 
and you need to look at what you're eating if you're a meat eater. Um, by the way, I believe in the dentition uh, having a de few degrees. I've got one in anthropology and one in forensics. And your dentition says that you should be eating some kind of raw pr protein of some kind. So don't feel badly. And for everybody out there who's a vegetarian, well, that's wonderful. And I hand it to you, but I know for myself, uh, I just, uh, I will eat occasional meat, but I won't eat that. Okay, I won't eat that. There it is. Can you see it? Encapsulated by fat. What do we have here? We have cow with face cancer. And what they do is they take these carcasses that are, you know, the parts that are not cancerous may end up on your table anyway. And when we talk about viruses and cancer and the kind of heat it takes to destroy these viruses, uh, get your own homegrown beef or whatever because you don't know what you're getting. And as far as that goes, that's ground up and given to dogs as dog food, cat food. And we have an epidemic of it of biblical proportions for our poor animals. One out of four dogs will die this year of cancer. And uh, some, it's getting to be one of three. And one of every four cats is dying of cancer this year. That's what we're doing to our best friends in the animal kingdom. This is not some kind of meat you want to eat. But this is a human liver. So as you can see what cancer looks like inside for all these people who love to drink, get cirrhosis of the liver, irritated enough, get yourself a good case of cancer. Here is an example. Uh, again, you see how it's encapsulated? Often it's a different color. Especially you can see it in bacon. What is bacon? Who, how many of you know what bacon is? What part of the body of the pig it comes from? From the belly, actually from the breasts. From the, from the female or the male, it's, it's the breast tissue. So breast cancer is very common with pigs. And yet we, uh, a lot of people eat it. I, I don't eat it. Okay, we look at this. And this, if you're into GMOs, you're into looking at something like that that may happen to you. And I'm not, I hope I can terrify you. I really do. So I want you to understand, we didn't used to have this much cancer in the world. Oh, no, we didn't. There was a time when people were able to uh, eat, just like he was talking about before, all kinds of natural foods. And I'll tell you, there's a little basis for this. And I'll show you how, why these natural remedies work and why chemo isn't. Let's go ahead and let's see if I can move this properly. All right. Here's some an, uh, examples of cancer in plants. Most of these are caused by bacteria. Others by viruses like this tobacco mosaic virus that causes cancer in tomatoes. And you can see the little, see along there? And here, this is corn smut. It's a fungus. And these tumors are caused by the fungus, so it can live in it, live inside these tumors. Here is a tree gall, and uh, it is a form of cancer the tree has that bacteria has caused, and viruses have caused this kind, these kind of galls, so that the tissue protects the kind of um, bacteria that lives in it. How many of you knew that about tree galls? How about making cups out of them to drink out of? Well, they do it. Yes, they do. Here's what happens to deer when they eat tree galls. It's not pretty, is it? That, what do we have? We eat deer flesh, and we eat other kinds of flesh, and we eat certain uh, uh, plants that have this, because you, even if you're a veggie, you know, you're a vegetarian, you're, you're going to eat something with plant cancer, and if it carries the papilloma virus, this is papilloma, and that's what you get. Okay. According to the uh, National Cancer Institute, say it's a myth. It says cancer rates reach epidemic proportions, and it shows a 
a fact here, and what's showing is colon cancer deaths per 100,000 men age adjusted. See that? 1949. How? What? What's? Why? It's a myth, isn't it? That cancer rates are increasing. Now let's look at the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's look at another graph. This is why did they show a graph that says the colon cancer rate is the same when this is the fact? Who paid them? Let's think about that, okay? Because actually colon cancer is increasing. As this show you here, all right? 2013, look at that up there, 1990. They only go that far up, but the point is they're not even showing the graph. It's even, you know, as you see for males, it's even increased. Uh, you've got this death rate. And I'm gonna give you a little hint. How many of you have heard, oh, about the five-year survival rate? Raise your hand. Five-year survival rate. Sounds, you can live five years in one day and die of cancer the next day, and you're in that five-year survival rate window. Did you know that? Yeah. So you can death, be deathly ill, but if you're still breathing, you'll be counted as a survivor. That's not a cure. And don't mix them up, but they do that all the time. Oh, look, we have 80% of them are surviving five years, and no, no percent you may uh, survive six. But they don't tell you that. Not always. Here we go. I'm going to try this again. Hmm. I'm going to try this. This is my friend Ed Tantro and his friend Tree Frog, we call him Ed Sherry. Ed had an interesting uh, experience. He had done chemo, he had done all that, and he was dying. So we put him on transferitrol, alpha lipoic acid. We put him on lots of vitamin C infusions. So he's getting vitamin C at doses that they don't even allow it. You know, they say, oh no, you can't do that, you know. Well, we did it. And uh, all his cancer that was all through his body had bladder cancer. And it vanished except for one spot. Now, what's interesting about his story, these doctors never told him, just in case any of you get bladder cancer, because it's common, never told him, don't put your legs up like that to, you know, to rest. Urine from the bladder can go up into your kidneys and give you kidney cancer. So you see, there are so many things, little things that you need to know, and they just don't teach you. How many of you are old enough to remember when they used to show warning signs of cancer? Lots of warning signs. Can you raise your hand? Have you ever seen those? Well, they used to, so I'm ancient. <laughs> they used to say, like a sore that didn't heal. Or they'd say, you know, you have uh, various uh, uh, signs that you might have cancer. Well, why should they do that if they make a lot of money off of cancer? I just wonder, why tell anybody about early detection? Anyway, Ed had an interesting thing happen to him. At Christmas time, he decided he was not going to, you see, we, he was forbidden to have any sugar, artificial sugar. Kept its diet low. Now, in this case, we had him on a um, low-protein uh, meat diet and so on. At Christmas, he decided to splurge, and then he finally just couldn't stop. After all, he had one spot. Cancer resurged like crazy, and he died a few months later. So, um, you know... It can be hard to stay on a regimen that would be good for you. Okay. Now here it says um, the immune system. We have checkpoint proteins. And these are some of the names. And what it is is that's one of the ways that cancer works. Uh, it will destroy particular proteins and particular um, their, what you might call, fail-safe uh, advantages that cells have and they will find a way around them. It's very active. All right, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. This is a famous research center. It's often called the Hutch. And they recently got themselves a great big contract to work with immunotherapy. So now they've come out with the truth about chemo because they're, they're, they want to sell their immunotherapy uh, stuff instead. So they're saying chemotherapy induces Healthy cells to release W and T cells of this is 16 B proteins. And these would interact with tumors, cause them to grow in vain, resist subsequent therapy. Now, it's true. 
anytime you know that someone's getting chemo, if it's not a leukemia, or if it's not a breast cancer and they're getting chemo, chances are it's just going to shrink the tumors. It doesn't kill them. You probably already know that. It doesn't kill them. It shrinks them, and they, they finally get a lot of immune, uh, immune response to it, and, and it doesn't work anymore. And it comes back and kills you. That's their last defense. They say, oh, we're going to give you a few more months, you know. Of course, you're vomiting, and you're, you feel terrible, your hair falls out, but you're getting a few more months. Or are you? Let's uh, go on. Now, these are the different viruses that cause. How many of you knew that most cancers are caused by viruses? Raise your hand. They used to suppress this until they got a really good vaccine for the papillomavirus. So then they started telling people, yes, these viruses do exist. Of course, many, viru uh, many cancers are caused by bacteria and fungi and everything like that, just like in the trees. And, but you may ask yourself, well, how is it that vegetable in general, the tree doesn't die because tree cells and all your veggie cells, you know, all, all the plant, plant proteins, they have a double wall around each cell. It's not like we do. So they don't, they, they really can't cross these barriers very well. And the plant can, just like we try to put fat around uh, any of the uh, cancer cells in our body that are starting to grow to try and block it off from the rest of the body. It's the same thing. Plants do it very, very well. So they can live with cancer all through them, but it, it's, it's not being spread to uh, vital parts of the plant. It's very rare that it, they will be killed by it. Anyway, I'm talking about that because this is a vir virus that herpes is so prevalent from chicken pox on to, you know, chicken pox and shingles and all that. But it's a whole family of irritating viruses that eventually often cause cancer. So what you, this is something you really can't do anything about. There's no vaccine, no treatment here for Epstein Barr. And this is when we had this way back in the 50s and 60s trying to cure it. And it was just dreadful. Okay, now, in the hepatitis B and hepatitis C, notice on this, because I don't want to go take too long on this, it says everyone in the United States born from 1945 through 65 are at risk. Ask yourself why they're not at risk if they're born after 65. I'm going to give you a hint. It's called biological warfare. All right? Biological warfare. And who is exposed to it? All right. And then we have the HIV, and they're saying, oh, my gosh, you know, AIDS and all that, how we get... There are so many ways, uh, there are tests out there that people are, they think they're getting really, really good results. Most of the tests are not that good. They, they brag that they're 95% or 98%, you know, accurate. Well, you can send your sample off to four or five different places, get four or five different answers. So be very, very careful about who you have sex with because you don't want to have to go and get these tests and then worry if you get a false positive. Okay. All right, let's, let's go on here. All right, we're talking HP, HPVs, uh, your HPVs that cause almost all your cancers, vaginal, oral, you know, vulvar, that's supposed to say, sorry about my typing, penile cancers. Sex, 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 so much fun, and look at the results. Anyway, <laughs> let's go on. And again, viruses, bacteria, what they cause. You get, a, you get yourself a stomach, um, uh, some kind of, uh, oh, I, you know, oh my gosh, I've got to drink milk here. I've got myself an ulcer. Any kind of ulcer is an irritation. Anytime you have an irritation, whether it's a sore that doesn't heal inside your body or, or on the outside, whether it's in your throat because you have acid reflux or whatever the problem is, you want to get yourself a good case of cancer, keep it irritated. All these people that have Crohn's disease and so on, they end up getting cancer. It's the irritated tissues. So I worry when people are eating like only nuts and a very harsh, lots and lots of fiber because they're irritating their, their colons that way too. Moderation in all things. 
Okay, now, who am I to talk? I'll give you a tiny little bit of background. My grandma died of cancer. My aunt Elsie, they cured her of cancer by putting radium up between her legs, up into her uterus, and for the rest of her life, she bled and sloughed off material for 40 more years. In, because of, that's the, the method they use. So you can use radiation. She died of cancer, of course. Because in, by being cured by that much radiation, she eventually got it back from the same source. Now, I, what I did is I saw all that and it broke my heart. And I love my grandma especially. And I was very angry. They said, there's no cure for cancer. What? What are you talking about? I mean, well, my aunt was cured, but of course she's throwing up all the time, and she had to have her gallbladder removed, you know, and all kinds of things that fell apart inside of her, and she was a tough old bird, but she finally died. So when I was 14, I caught myself some wild mice and started slicing them open. That sounds kind of cruel, but I mean, I wanted to see if I could find any with cancer in them. And lo and behold, I couldn't. And uh, it was very frustrating. Anyway, to make a long story short, I finally got a hold of tissues, uh, cancerous tissues and things like that by haunting the hospitals and so on. And um, some American Cancer Society lady helped me. And all of a sudden, I got cancer in fish. And uh, boy, I, I was really working at that. And these were viviparous uh, fish. They uh, had bear their babies alive. They're mollies, little black mollies. And uh, I took them, there, there was a, a uh, dedication of a clinic called Watson Clinic over in Florida. And the great doctor, Alton Oxner, was there. I couldn't find anybody to tell me whether I had, my fish had cancer. I knew they did from looking at the books, but no degree, no, you know, anything. Sure enough, you know, he agreed. And so then uh, some doctors got interested in what I was doing. I invented, in the meantime, uh, a new way to get magnesium out of seawater. I love chemistry. And uh, went to the International Science Fair, met Werner von Braun, all these people, and a whole bunch of CIA people you know, are interested in people who are winners in the International Science Fairs. And uh, I remember across from me was Robert Strom. He won the $64,000 question, and we played chess. We were having a good time together. And um, the CIA came, all these officers and military officers, and questioned us. And, and then he said he, was, he liked communism. They didn't want to talk to him anymore. This is the height of the Cold War. And I said, I'm a blooming patriot. I'll talk to you, you know. And uh, I ended up, they said, you need to write to the president and uh, offer your services and so on. Well, I waited. Um, I uh, made a mistake in a book once and said, or in a paper, I said, I wrote to President Kennedy right away. Of course, Kennedy didn't get an office until the, the following uh, six months or so. But the point I'm trying to get at is people will take a little nit nitpick at you like that. I didn't write to Eisenhower because it's a lame duck. But I did offer my services to my country, and all of a sudden I had a lot of interest in uh, what I was doing with cancer research, and that's a long story. I didn't know Oxner was involved with the CIA, for example. Ended up, anyway, uh, getting a lot of help from Oak Ridge. I had doctors, oncologists, who were trained at Oak Ridge with, under, and I've got the documents. I've got them all with me. I've, 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 that you can see. I've, I have 10 books of documents. And that was because, in the end, I'd be working in a project to kill Castro. To me, that was history. When I began on that project, I'd been on it for six months. Um, they had been on it, excuse me, for six months, right before the Cuban Missile Crisis. And by the time I joined, they'd been on it a year. And they were uh, making a great progress. But I had a special, I had some special training and stuff. What happened is, I wasn't trained like most uh, cancer researchers. I had an open mind. I didn't realize you had to go through certain protocols. I was after what I was after. And I ended up in a rather primitive laboratory giving mice cancer in seven days. And they'd never done that before, anybody. It got in all the newspapers, you know, and everything like that. But uh, basically, um, 
the, we had two Nobel Prize winners and three of the greatest doctors in cancer research in America came to my lab and they shut it down. It was so dangerous, so dangerous because of the virus I was working with. And I'd used tobacco products in order to make uh, this stuff more viable. And uh, I got invited to go to the uh, Roswell Park Institute for Cancer Research in New York. Um, Sir Robert Robinson, who was a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, uh, they uh, gave me the money to get there, uh, you know, and his wife and all that. Dr. Deal, who's vice president of the American Cancer Society in charge of research, his wife had had her breasts removed. And here he's the great, I mean, he knows more than anybody else, and yet his own wife was suffering of huge swollen arms because they had taken all these glands away. And, of course, you, if you don't have your lymph glands, you can't drain the fluid out. And that poor woman had to wear tight bandages just so she could use her arms. And that was the wife of the vice president of research for the American Cancer Society. All that suffering, and they, even they couldn't do anything for her. When I was at Roswell, I learned how to handle the, the SIV, this uh, uh, SB40 monkey virus and other... Uh, all kinds of uh, different things in radiation. In fact, I got too much radiation. I need to get uh, some help for my eyes because uh, we uh, were careless with radiation back then, too careless. But uh, when I was there, I also worked on something called the RMPI 1640 formula. And young as I was, I helped to develop that and a few years later it came out. It's still being used as the greatest uh, formula medium used to grow cancer cells. And I can assure you, all of you, you add a speck of sugar, the white chemical that you love, to any cancer cells that are growing in a test tube with the RPMI, RPMI 1640 formula, it grows it so well and it'll take off. It'll grow even faster. So fast that the cells will suffocate each other trying to grow faster. So all of you people who love sugar, you're you're feeding the wrong stuff, okay? Don't do it. Just don't, don't do it. It's a chemical. Anyway, I had, the, I was finally, after a year, I, I put a paper out there on melanogenesis. I know a lot about melanoma. I've got a mark here on my arm. Can anybody see that from this distance? Well, that was a, quite a beautiful melanoma at one time. And uh, the doctor said, look, we're going to have to cut out that whole muscle here. <laughs> you know, and maybe we'll have to cut off your arm right here. And uh, I said, I, I think I've got a better way. Uh, this is four years later. All right? If you can see it. Four years later. All I did is I, well, I used a chemical I can't tell you on stage here because it's against the law to use. <laughs> <laughs> plus um, liquid niacin, powdered niacin, and a bleach cream that, um, okay, you put it together, that peeled right off. It, the whole, it swelled up all around like that. But, you know, and if it does that too much, you have to stop for a while because you can get too too sensitive to the niacin and it's not going to work. It's going to be, your whole body is going to get too sensitive to the niacin. So anyway, nicotinic acid. Why don't, why, why did that work? Why did they want to cut off my arm? Well, let's just look at why they want to do these things. So anyway, you have all these various ways. You, the, the poor people, by the way, there are some things out there like the, how about who's heard of the RIFE, R-I-F-E? Please don't go there. They, when you have, let me give you an example. If you have a certain frequency that's exploding certain cells, most of your cancer cells are just almost exactly like regular cells. They just have difference in the DNA. By the time you, you're supposed to have something that can uh, make that explode, it's going to explode normal cells too. It isn't, it, isn't, it doesn't work. And uh, they, the, they made a lot of money. I saw a rife microscope in Sarasota, Florida at Bosch and Lum when I was working on my uh, materials and everything. 
and gave these mice cancer, but I got a lot of help. They gave me special contact lenses, but I was, I was interested in their oil immersion microscope, you know, so, and uh, got access to an electron microscope, and that, was, that meant a lot. I was 18 when I left, uh, did the work on melanoma and all that. By the time I'm 19, and I've had now two years of special training, and I've worked, of course, I'm going to college, I've been offered an opportunity to work with Dr. Mary S. Sherman. Anybody here, here have has, uh, read the book, Dr. Mary's Monkey? Please read it if you haven't. And, and my, I'm in there, too, because of he, they found out that was the one that was in, involved with this, uh, what Dr. Mary was involved with. They brought me to New Orleans because I had the 1640, the RPMI 1640 formula. It, it wasn't perfectly developed yet, but I had the best formula at my age, untraceable. I wasn't a doctor. I could handle radiation. I could handle the, the, these dangerous viruses they were working with. And, uh, and I could grow cancer faster than anybody. See? In primitive situation. They had a ring of doctors. Each of the doctors was a need to know. They had a different section, different part, working thousands of mice, literally. We had a linear particle accelerator. We were giving these mice, we'd pull these tumors out, we'd select the biggest tumors. Now imagine doing this over and over again, generation after generation of mice. You, you don't care, see, because this is a project for weaponizing. You don't care what you've got just so you've got it. It's got to, you pick out the biggest tumors of all these mice all together, macerated in a wearing blender, see? Look, and uh, pull out, sift out that virus. Inject it into more mice, bam, you get the biggest tumors again and again and again. Do you realize how dangerous they are at the end? I'm going to show you at the very end of all that I'm showing you, I'm going to show you a mouse, that what happened to that mouse after only a, a few days with this terrible, terrible disease that was created. How stupid could I be to think that after they used it on Castro that they'd never use it again? I trusted them. Oh, no, we're, we're good people. We would never. Oh, yes, they would. Oh, yes, they would. Okay, so there are various sarcomas and stuff. And anyone want to talk about these at any time? Great, we're going to just pass on through this. Parasitic flatworms can give you cancer. You can, you've got you know, schistosomiosis, uh, uh, schistosomiosis and, and stuff like that. You have all this stuff going on. Um, where plants and animals, uh, their, their past cancer t is a byproduct of different infestations, infestations and uh, various uh, uh, parasites, and it depends. So you want to avoid, again, as much as you can. Here's the problem. This is the main reason that we don't have the cure for cancer. It's called money. We have a huge, huge industry right now. I mean, we're talking about gigantic. These are, those machines you're looking at there, like the washing machines, they're making pills. The payment, you may have to pay $1,000 for one of those pills. They're making them by the washing machine load. But notice the kind, what he's wearing. They're toxic. They're dangerous. And if he breathes the wrong stuff, it can kill him. This on the end is one of the most nasty of machines of all. Anybody know what that is? You've been smashed, if, and you've been mashed, if you can know what that is. Yeah, that's for mammograms. How many of you have had a mammogram? Raise your hand if you've had a mammogram. Shame on you. All right? Don't do it. You hurt your breast tissues two ways, mashing them and radiation, x-rays. Use thermograms. Write the word down, thermogram, and memorize it. My friend in California, she had... She was worried she had cancer, and I, uh, she'd been taking this. Uh... So what we did is I said, look, I want you to have a thermogram instead. And she had enough money to get one. Yeah, you can't get the insurance to pay for it because this is a big industry. You know how many of those machines are running around all, the, all over the place and technicians for them and so on? Those, those machines there often they will detect uh, fibroid tumors. You go and get a lumpectomy and you find out you didn't have cancer. But half the time when you're looking at her microscope, if you see the little, 
So often you have pseudo cancers going on, and you may get your whole breast removed, but a thermogram would have shown you whether it was cancer or not, because thermogram will show hot spots. If it's cancer, it's growing faster, it'll show hot spots. So my friend in California, she got her tri uh, thermogram, and they found a cancer up in her neck. If she'd done the mammogram, she would have been dead by now. Got the, she got that removed. Number one, if you have uh, cancer that's not very far along, for heaven's sakes, get it surgically removed. Forget about having biop. What is a biopsy? The biopsy is a test so they don't get sued. That's basically what it is. Don't get a biopsy. If you have a lump, get it out. Don't fool with it. Men, so many people are dying of prostatitis. It turns into cancer. Slow, they say, oh, it's slow growing. Let us do the seeds and things. I'm going to show you what happens a little further along with somebody who did that. Anyway, our poor friend, um, <coughs> Big Pharma, they're so poor. They just, they just begging for your money all the time. You know, how, how, how are they going to survive without it? Right. Global bone cancer market. This is, they actually have all kinds of market uh, ad, uh, analyses being done. And uh, so people can invest in, like, in this case, bone cancer. Great investment. You know why? It says, <laughs> you look at this, it says, if in the tremendous growth in the number of people diagnosed with bone cancer, risk factors causing bone factor, successive exposure to radiation. See, that excessive radiation therapy. What's radiation therapy? It's getting treated for cancer. All right? Family history, previous cancer treatments. Wait a minute, bone cancer is caused by previous cancer treatments? What? This primitive thing about you're going to burn it, you're going to cut it, you're going to poison it. Primitive. Abnormal cellular growth. Common treatment for bone cancer is chemotherapy. Aren't we lucky? Okay. These are the people that are making lots and lots of money off of bone cancer. Why then? You think they want to cure it? This is so important. They're not, uh, for the public, they're not telling you how much money they're going to be able to make. Globally, the market for bone cancer is expected to grow at a rate of blah, blah. Okay? Invest in everybody's deaths, folks. How many of you would like to make a lot of money? There's your list, write it down. If you have any ethical sense and you don't do it. Okay. Chemo, radiation can cause serious heart problems, folks. You're told that 50, about 50% 50 or a little less than that or people die from cancer and the others are all dying from heart attacks, right? You know that statistic, don't you? Don't you? It's not real. About 5% um, of the people who die from heart attacks are getting heart attacks from chemotherapy. And when you add that to the equation, you find out more people are dying from cancer than anything else. Got it? Okay, oh, by the way, <laughs> um, this is one of the leading causes of um, all kinds of things. <laughs> but uh, let's go back just for a moment here. Risk of suicide is 12 times more likely after diagnosis. Risk of death by heart attack is five times more likely. So if you're diagnosed with cancer, you have a, well, more than twice a, uh, a chance of wanting to kill yourself. My mother died in her bed rather than go to the hospital because in the United States of America, they hear, they say, oh, this horrible socialistic medicine, you know, at least you can, at least you can vote them out. We've got insurance companies over there, middlemen, who decide whether or not you can get cancer treatment. Scandinavia is really, and places like that have really worked it out better than you have. I got a nosebleed when I was in Sweden, and how many minutes do you think it took me to get into the emergency room? Five. Five minutes, people. And I'll tell you something else that happened. I had to pay because I wasn't a Swedish citizen. And I said, look, you're cauterizing my nose in the wrong place here. Um, it's not going to work. Oh, yes, it will. I'd had tubes down my throat. If you read my book, Me and Lee, you're going to find a lot of things. Um, I said, you're not doing it right. I, oh, yeah, we are. 
So I went home, and sure enough, a few days later, I had to come back and get it done again. And they apologized, and they did it right that time. Cause, and you know what? It gave me my money back. <gasps> they don't make money over there doing that. You think that would happen in America? <laughs> they, 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 they probably charged me twice as much because I bothered them. Okay, heart attack death rates were halved in Great Britain, the Great Great Britain, while cancer, cancer mortalities rose. All right, <laughs> rare cancers on the increase. Oops, this, uh, sorry here, I've got to go back. Let's go back here. Um, you've got an alliance of 80 charities in Public Health England's National Cancer Intelligence Network saying deaths from rare cancers are on the rise, both in terms of number and proportion. They're on the rise, folks, from this. When we were working on this project back in 1963, we had ways that we could cure cancer. We, had, we were studying various viruses that could do it. We were studying uh, uh, bacteriophage. Anybody know what bacteriophage? been pushing bacteriophage, and I'm praying somebody here knows what that is. Anybody here? Okay, let's put it this way. Can you hear me? Okay. Bacteriophage looks like a little mosquito, but it's a virus. It has a platform, you might say, on top. It has a su sticker or sucker like a mosquito between its four little spindly legs. It has all this RNA DNA going up like that. But on top, you can piggyback any kind of thing on top of it, just like you can with a polio virus piggyback stuff on top. And that's why the polio virus, uh, by the way, it's the very first virus that was ever created by human beings. That is, that they, they replicated it. We have replicated. Why would we replicate the polio virus? That polio virus can carry any virus you want right in the human body. Why would we want to do that? Well, they'll show you something what they did with the bacteriophage. The bacteriophage, by the way, is why, when you can throw all these sewer treatment plants and everything, if you think it's fluoride or if you think it's chlorine that's cleaning it up, they're using special strains of bacteriophage to get rid of cholera, to get rid of all kinds of diseases. In fact, you don't have to have antibiotics. You just need a nice, cheap bacteriophage that is available to everybody, and we wouldn't have to have antibiotics. Whenever you hear, oh, you've got flesh-eating bacteria, why haven't they made a bacteriophage for it? Because they certainly can get rid of it and everything else. Let me tell you also, get yourself a black light that is it's full spectrum, it's called, okay? So it has part of the spectrum will kill bacteria. You get yourself something that won't heal, and they say, oh, we're going to cut your leg off because you've got flesh-eating bacteria. You tell them to go to hell, and you get yourself, <laughs> sorry for my language, you get yourself a black light and get, get about, you know, keep it, Keep it, uh, uh, sponge it off, you know, and, and you dr keep it dry. But you, put, you expose that to black light, and you know what? It heals it. They used to use it on, on uh, cruise ships. They used to have them in hospitals. We now have very filthy hospitals again because we have all this bacteria that, that uh, is, uh, you know, resistant now to uh, all kinds of antibiotics. But they used to keep hospitals really clean in the 50s. They had the black lights going on at night. Or they, and they clean it all up. Black light also shows every bit of, any, any bit of protein or anything will fl fluoresce. And you can see all the filth. I, I closed a hospital once that was not treating uh, newborns right. I just turned off the lights and brought in the sanitary inspection officers with the black light and they could see filth everywhere. And that's what you have in most of the hospitals. You have all, many people are going to hospitals now and what happens? They come out, they're sicker than ever. They, uh, they pick up all kinds of stuff from the hospitals. And they're not using black lights anymore. They have forgotten. Because, oh, antibiotics can do everything. Okay, it's one of my big problems I have with... Okay, uh, there are two books, Dr. Mary's Monkey and the other is Me and Lee. And I will be talking about Lee Harvey Oswald, who was protecting our project, pretending to be communist, pretending to be pro-Castro so that he, because Castor was bringing over spies all the time to try to, because he didn't want to die, you know, and they were finding out and trying to uh, do what they could to stop some of these projects or kill, actually kill the people working on them. 
SB40 Foundation, here's Alexander Horman, born June 7th, 96. He was just fine. We know he did not have any kind of simian virus in his system when he was born because they, these were doctors themselves and they actually kept his, uh, his uh, natal cord. And so they had the fetal uh, uh, serum there. They knew what they had. And it didn't have any virus in it and they tested her, she didn't have it. But when he died, okay, of brain cancer, which is a rare cancer, he had the SP40 monkey virus in his system. That's what we were working with on this biological weapon. It has spread everywhere, everywhere. Chances are 60% of you have the SV40 monkey virus in your bloodstream because you had the polio vaccine. They grew the, the polio, uh, all these, this nice polio, I was telling you about those nice little viruses, but piggybacked on top and they're all carrying these loads of simian viruses because they were being grown on monkey kidneys that were infected. In fact, that was number 40. Uh, there are about 75 different viruses that were in, that these monkey kidneys were infected with. And this particular one caused, caused a folioma. And so anyway, here's this little boy. So the SB40 Foundation is to uh, try and find a cure. Uh, we have some real problems. They have hidden this. They have subverted it. They have piled all kinds of things on top. They've even changed the name of the SB40 monkey virus. So you don't, then they'll say, oh, we have, you know, the incidence of SB40 is going down because they've called it something else, okay? <laughs> that works. All right, here we have Alexander's cancer was tested. I already told you about that. Now, the CDC in the United States said that 98 million people did get it. It was contaminated, and uh, that, that uh, they said that, that was between you know the 50s and 1963. They lie. We didn't get the last of it out until 1999. Now, it's very interesting about this. I, I like to call it a ball of yarn. It's a very complex uh, SV40 monkey virus that is causing in other mammals. And they say, oh, it's not getting to us. It stays latent in our system. How many of you have ever had chicken pox? How many of you have ever had shingles? That's from chicken pox. You know that, right? Okay, so you can have chicken pox when you're a little kid. And then 50 years later, you'll get from the same virus sitting in your system because your immune system goes down or you get tired or fatigued or whatever, all of a sudden you've got a shingles. Well, it's the same thing with SV40 monkey virus. It is a monkey virus. It stays late in your system. Your immune system is sometimes going to get uh, strangled or strained or, or it'll become defunct, maybe because you're getting a lot of radiation. Bingo, it comes into action. And uh, they'll say, oh dear, you've got a tumor. How many people, when they die of cancer, get, it they get their cancer checked to see it has SV40 monkey virus in it? Nobody, it's too expensive. And you know, you don't want to look. Because how many of you have had your polio shot? Or you've had the, come on, how many of you have had the polio vaccine in some form? Come on, be honest. <laughs> All right, if you, got your, if you got vaccinated before 1999, you have a very good chance of carrying the monkey virus. And unfortunately, you marry somebody. If you're a woman, you have a, a baby, the baby gets it. So we have it going on generation after generation. That thing, that contamination never should have happened. They tried to hide it. They, for years, they lied about it. Because after all, and by the way, they're still... We have Mr. Bill Gates. He said, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. He's out there injecting all kinds of kids with a polio vaccine, upon which you can piggyback, as I said, any virus you want. Whenever you're told you're going to get a free flu vaccine or something, remember, what we're looking at is we're getting people used to getting shots. Now, I don't know what it's like in Great Britain, but I know that in Sweden, you only have to have 11 to 14 uh, vaccinations. In the United States, it went from 46 to 68 this year. Can you imagine? I mean, baby's a pincushion, just a living pincushion. 
Okay, protection against, get your free polio shot, folks. Get your free flu vaccine, okay? You're just gonna love the results because we found out that polio uh, was going down. <laughs> the incidence was going down, 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 down. Here's, about here is where the, uh, the vaccine started. It's very, it's pitiful. Especially since today we have, we still have polio around, only they're calling it, you know, the flu and things. I mean, literally, you'll find out that people are, you know, suffering from a, a low grade of polio and, and it's the flu. They think it's the flu because they have the same symptoms. Okay, let's go on. So I told you about this already. And it was a free vaccine. Everybody got it. Well, here's what happened to this. Here's a simian virus. So you can see it under the microscope. And by the way, cancer, all kinds of cancer viruses look the same. You can hardly tell them apart. Let's just put it this way. They're, uh, they're complex and they're very difficult to get rid of. Once you've got them, they're you're probably going to keep them. There we go with the polio death rate. See that? Just like I told you. So by the 1970s, I mean, the incidence of polio. But no, we've got, you know, every kid still has to take their shots. Little, you know, or the, here's Dr. Heath. I even, I didn't meet him actually, but I ran into him in the hall. We're at Tulane University. CIA approached him, and bad as he was, because he's not being very nice to these monkeys. They've got their tops of their heads are cut off, and they've got electrodes in there, and they're doing things to the monkeys, okay? This is where I was in New Orleans when he was there. There were no standards. The reason I got kicked out of cancer research is because what we were working with had to be tested on volunteers. And these volunteers are from Angola Prison. Yeah, and they, they thought, well, I, I want to go to the mental hospital over here instead of being on the chain gang. I'll be a volunteer. They didn't tell them that if this worked, it'd kill them. Uh, they were supposed to already be suffering from a terminal disease. That was what I was told, and I found out that wasn't true. When I protested, they kicked me out of cancer research forever. That's what happened to me. Okay, now here's what happened to him. Dr. Alt Noxter, who was my mentor, and uh, asked me to come to New Orleans. You're going to get, you know, we're going to, you're going to work with Dr. Mary Sherman. And, you know, after that, in the fall, you're going to enter Tulane Medical School two years early, and we're going to pay for everything. You just have to do this little job for us in the meantime. Yeah, right. Which ended, you know, kill Castro. Well, I was from the University of Florida, and I didn't like Castro. I mean, when I finally found out what it was about, and it was only six months after the Cuban Missile Crisis, I, it was like this. They were saying, we could have World War III from this man. You mean you're not willing to get rid of one man in order to save millions of people? So please don't think I was an unethical person. No, I wasn't. On the other hand, Lee Oswald told me something very interesting. He said, so you don't like Kennedy? I said, I hate him. I, I loved him in high school, but no, I hate him. Look, look what he did with the Bay of Pigs. And Lee ex carefully explained to me how it wasn't Kennedy's fault. Okay. He had to take the blame for it. It was Richard Nixon who started it. And Kennedy started firing all these CIA officers that were in charge. I, Lee Oswald admired Kennedy. Changed all the way I felt about him. Here's the man who didn't, though. He never loved Kennedy. He hated him, Alton Oxner. Very, uh, he's also a eugenicist. Okay, he believed in, um, let's don't go there. But there he is with the infant grandson, Eugene. They inoculated him with a Cutter vaccine. Why? He had invested in Cutter laboratories with their nice polio vaccine. Brought in everybody, come look, I'm going to show you how safe this is. Inoculated his little grandson, inoculated his granddaughter. The grandson was dead in seven days. His granddaughter got polio. The day after he inoculated them, California said, stop, we're having people dying. If he had been one day later, he would have saved his grandson. Now, that's a doctor, and that got him interested. He realized that if doctors trust their doctors so much, and he knew some of Castro's doctors hated Castro secretly, you know, and that they had texts also. Because when you go in front of an x-ray machine, folks, do you have the doctor turn on the x-ray machine for you? Who does it? A lowly tech. 
who can be bribed. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Bring down the immune system, give them a dose of, a nice uh, dose of, of this material, and uh, they get cancer because their immune system's down because they got this big x-ray. And what's, what's scary, what's really scary about uh, Alt Knoxner, he said to me, look, the problem we've got, and we've brought you in because of this, because I've been working with stuff like this, he said, we'd have to inject a quart of cancer cells <laughs> into Castor. He said, Castor's not going to take a quart of anything into his bloodstream, you know? So what are we going to do? He said, you know, we've got to do... And, of course, they had made this super potent, just a few cells if they could survive. It give you cancer, terrible cancer, fast cancer. It causes, listen to the list, causes brain cancer, causes pancreatic cancer, causes bone can cancer. These used to be rare, folks. They're not anymore. So this has spilled over into the population. You know how I feel. Now, if, if I die, uh, I'm not going to die now, but they, they could get me. I've already had accidents, okay? That's why I don't see very well. That's why I can't live, see my family. I can't be there. I, my, when Mother's Day, my birthday came, I was alone. And even though I have 11 grandchildren and great-grandchildren, three of my five children won't even speak to me. Because I'm telling you, you've got to know these things. If I save one life, it's worth it. So anyway, let's go on. Dr. Mary Sherman, and there's Bernice Eddy and Sarah Stewart. How much time do I have left? 15 minutes. How much? 15? I'm going to... Oh, dear. I, I'm not going to make it, go, folks, but I'll go as fast as I can. So these are the people I worked. This is my books. Me and Lee, David Ferry, Mafia Pilot. If any of you have seen the film GFK, you'll see the mice running around. As I said, they had these ring of doctors, but the trouble is that they could communicate if the ring wasn't broken. And I was placed on the, uh, accidentally on the, on the secret side of things. I got there two weeks early, and I, I, the doctors were out of town, and I met some people like strippers and so on. I shouldn't have been around. And so they sent someone to rescue me, and that was Lee Oswald. And because he, what, he, they're all old stooges. And, I mean, these are old men, you know. They sent a nice-looking Marine. And uh, I didn't know he was married, uh, because he didn't have his wedding ring on his left hand, and I looked at him, it was on his right hand. So when I flirted with him, I didn't realize. So anyway, and we both had miserable marriages. My fiance did come and marry me, and he left one day later. And the police raided where I was. I was so ignorant. The place that I had gotten uh, rented was a whorehouse in New Orleans. <laughs> Well, I just thought they were dressed up pretty and they had lots of boyfriends. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you're... I was going to be a nun. I mean, you can't know, understand. It's just I had no concept that, that all this was going on. Anyway, I was kicked out. The police... I uh, remember. The police, it was really something because uh, they were bringing down these women, you know, and they were dressed in handcuffs and feathers. That's all they had. <laughs> And I, I was wearing a see-through nighty because that night was our wedding night. I had my brand new, you know, marriage certificate. And he left. He said, I'm not, I did, you wouldn't have married me if I told you I was going to be gone all summer. So I'm not going to give you my phone number or anything. I'm not going to tell you. And my doctors were still out of town. I'd come, you know, early. I was kicked out at St. Charles in, in, in the middle of the night. And I'm carrying my husband's my brand new husband's guitar case, I filled it with clothes. I've carried a typewriter on top of that. I've got a suitcase here, a suitcase there with books, and I'm pushing a box along with my foot. And, and then I'm hiding when anybody goes by, you know. You they have these cubans going, Linda, you know, meaning pretty, you know. Well, I was pretty all right. I was pretty scared is what I was. <laughs> and I finally found a, a minister, and he was up working real late on a sermon. They let me in and I went, boys, be, oh, shit, look what they did to me. You know, I'm alone. The only phone number I had was of Lee Oswald, who admit, I'd met at the, uh, you know, said, look, I'm going to make sure everything will be okay for you. And you wonder why we fell in love. He had been forced to marry a uh, 
Soviet woman, so he wouldn't get deported. He was a spy to start with. He comes back on a State Department loan that says, in small print, you have to be a good citizen in the United States. Nothing happens to him. He was one of ours. But I will talk to you more about Lee and how he got involved in all that the next time we speak, tomorrow. If you can stand to hear me anymore. Anyway. So these are, all right, Bay of Pigs. We hit that again, we had to kill Castro somehow. And we had a lot of things I'd like to talk about. He, he, I want you to know, get a good look at this man because more and more, just like Lee said, the more and more this man is responsible. And we had a coup. Um, the difference between those two men is extraordinary. This, the one that's screaming and yelling, is, he wants the helicopter to shut up. That's what it's really about. The helicopter's coming down. Nobody can, can't hear anything going on. And Kennedy's saying, Shh, you're cussing. You don't do that now in front of the people, you know. These are enemies of Kennedy. The one on the end, completely important, is Carlos Marcello. And that just because the CIA and the F uh, FBI and, and the mafia are all working together to try and kill Castro, it doesn't mean that the mafia killed Castro. Don't fall for it. Okay? Everybody was involved. Okay. Here you have Albert Thomas winking at Lyndon Johnson. And Lyndon Johnson has the trophy by his side, Jackie Kennedy. She's shell-shocked. I mean, she... Come out here, I want you to be here when I'm... You know what that man also did? Linda Johnson calls Bobby Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's brother, and says, oh, by the way, how do I get... Tell me what I'm supposed to say for the oath of office. He could have gotten that from anybody. He wanted to rub it in. Oh, yes, he did. Okay, we could talk a lot about this. We'll do that next time. We talk about there's Castro, isn't he cute, with his girlfriends. She t they gave her poison pills to give him, but she hit him in cold cream and they dissolved. <laughs> it didn't work. Okay, here are the men who hated Kennedy so much. And there's Castro, famous for smoking cigars. They're going to give him lung cancer. Okay? That's me, and that's why Lee, I mean, we had our physical attractions. <laughs> but um, you'll see it says here, she will have a go-ahead signal, continue research in a new field, that of finding substances which cause cancer to become most deadly. They had me, that was 1961. They already got me pegged to work, and I became an expert in growing cancer faster than anybody else. Why do they want to make cancer more steadily? They told me, oh, we want you to do this because then, you will, then maybe we'll find out what we can kill it with. No, it was about a biological weapon. All right? That's what they were interested in. This is what lungs look like when they're nice and clean and you don't smoke, and there's what happens if you do, for anybody interested. That lady at the top, she's one of my witnesses. I told her I was going to Tulane. It's people like that that have uh, substantiated what I'm telling you about who I was and what I did. I've got about 15 of them. So anybody tell you I have no witnesses or no evidence? Well, somebody's telling them uh, what to say. This happened in New Orleans. You have these models drinking the polio stuff. You see the doctors, they're not drinking it. They're just toasting with it. They know better. Woman expert in cancer. So here's what happened to my friends and all of us that were in here. I was saved because I was Judy Vary on this project. But when I got married, I was sent to Florida. I was sent out of the... And they said, you be quiet. If you ever talk about this, we'll kill you. But I was Mrs. Robert Allison Baker III, not Judy Vary. And you know something? I couldn't go to my sister's wedding because my maiden name would get in the paper. And that would bring all the reporters. Hey, what happened? Because I had newspaper... All, you know, reporters came from all over the place to interview me. What are you going to do? When are you going to cure cancer? That thing. I, I had to stay silent. So I couldn't go to my grandparents' funerals. It was years. I finally, in 1977, I finally went to my father's funeral. And sure enough, a reporter showed up, and there it was in the paper. Woman fulfilled, you know, married to this guy. And I have children, and for some reason, I'm not in cancer anymore. But it's, by then, it's 1977. Here's my friend, Mary Sherman. She was murdered. The day the Warren Commission came to get testimonies in New Orleans, she was front page. This here woman expert, my enemy said, oh, that woman wasn't in cancer research. You can't give mice cancer. 
And he spread this. That was John McAdams and, and their whole group of people trying to tell, you know, oh, this is just another crazy conspiracy theory, all right? So this is from this woman expert. That is from the front page in the Wall Street Journal. So much for the John McAdams. That's what happened to my friend Mary Sherman. Her arm is missing. She, they put her on fire. They stabbed her. You, how many people do you think are going to talk when this happens on the front page and the Warren Commission comes to get your testimony in New Orleans? How many people are going to talk? That's my friend. It, 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 it's the reason the mouth is shaped like that and everything is from electrocution. She was electrocuted with a linear particle accelerator, which you can read about in Dr. Mary's Monkey. You can read about the rest of it in my book, Me and Lee. Here's my friend David Ferry. He's got a blood clot right there by the pill, pill right there. That's uh, proof that he was murdered and because he still has contents of stuff in his stomach. It's, anyway, you can read that in my book, David Ferry. But uh, I didn't, they are all sold. I don't have any left here. For, but you can get my books just by going to PayPal and just put in either my name, Judith Ferry Baker, at gmail.com. That's very easy to remember. And I'll tell you how to get the book and, you know, sign and all that. Over here to England, it costs a bit, you know, extra because of the postage. But, um, by the way, on the, the 29th, oh, I've got to hurry. Never mind. I'll tell you something later. Here's George de Morinschild. This is what happens to people who know too much. They're trying to say he shot himself in the mouth with a shotgun. And um, they say you can hear his footsteps as he sits down and does it. But he was wearing socks. Okay, somebody else did that. You could hear it on a recording. This is what they did to My Lee. This is what they did to Jack Ruby, who had to shoot him. They ejected me with cancer cells. It's on record. Got rid of him with the same stuff that we developed. And here's Al Maddox, who was his jailer. You'll see it says down there, to Judith Very, it says to Judith Very, respectfully, Al Maddox. He's the jailer that took care of Jack Ruby. And uh, this is what he looks like. That's him, that's Al Maddox. He's looking at the gun. Lee Oswald never owned that gun. I'm going to tell you a lot more about that. Okay. These are presidents Hugo Chavez. You have Kirchner. You have Rousseff. You have Lula. You have Lugo. You have Castro and Morales. All of them got cancer at about the same time. And it's all oral. Why? It looks like they're putting it in the food now. That's what they have in common. They're all left-wing leaders that the U.S. government does not like. And this is from 2011. Of course, Chavez died of it. Finally, Castro did. He fought it for years. Okay, Cornelius Rhodes injected, just in case you think you can't get cancer by injection. All right, he gave 13 of them cancer in Puerto Rico in 1931. Okay, so don't think it can't be done. You're going to hear that. It's not true. Okay, there's Chavez looking better. Now, here we have the church... Uh, committee in 1975 they were shown this gun this gun uh, can cause a heart attack it can also shoot a, a capsule that will give you cancer okay and that's way back in 1975 what do you think they've got now please understand that you don't you when you see a whole bunch of people who are you know uh, Working in cancer and they're not involved. Here's our highest cancer rates. You've got Denmark at the top. All these people, as you go up, they're, they're, they're the great meat eaters. And I like meat. You can eat a normal amount of meat, but these people eat outrageous. And they also eat more candy than anybody else. But let's go faster here. You'll find that what causes Danish and Swedish male female cancer statistics to be so similar and why is Denmark the number one in the world? What's interesting, and I'm going to be very blunt now, folks, if you wear a tight bra and you wear it to bed, you're not getting the drainage that you need to keep your breasts healthy. And over and over again, wherever they're not wearing bras, they're not getting breast cancer. And men, all of you are sitting in these seats. The harder the seat, the less circulation you're getting for your prostate. 
And the modern disease is prostatitis and prostate cancer for you guys. You have an infected prostate. Don't do like what my husband did, my former husband, because he said, I'm not going to get it off. I don't wear diapers or I don't want to have problems. And uh, they gave him the usual, the, you know, the pellets and the, the, uh, these other things. And the, um, he died an agonizing death of bone cancer because this stuff that we're working with causes brain cancer, bone cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer. It's all... Okay, this is why, why we don't have all that, that uh, cancer that they're having in Denmark right next to Sweden. Sweden does this with their... The pigs have carry viruses, many viruses, and some of them cause cancer. And the pigs themselves have it. This, they're humanely raised, and we don't have... The, it's just way down there, their cancer rate in Sweden, compared to Denmark, which is right next door, because here's what they do in Denmark. And they do it in the United States, and that's why I don't eat pork in this country. Those poor animals can't even move around, and they transmit their viruses from animal to animal, as you can see. And there's no sunlight to kill the viruses by nature, see? We, we deserve what happens to us. All right, this, don't eat mackerel, because all this stuff, this shark and swordfish, towelfish, tuna, They've got, they're full of mercury, heavy metals, and once you get in that. Okay, okay, so I'm going to go faster now. You want to see some of these things. Cancers that are in meats. There's a cow. Please remember, I can get cancer too. Cancer epidemic going on. I, uh, now, here's what they say. We're going to have cancer. It's going to go from 13.2 million in 2010. They project it's going to be at 22.2 million in 2030. And by the way, treatment costs approaching $460 billion. I want you to think about that as like $400 billion profits for the cancer treatment industry. That's, where would the cancer palaces go if we cured cancer? What would happen? By the way, you have the palaces, but this is what they do inside. They treat you like cattle, and they're in agony. What about all the machines? You need to see these. You don't realize what it's like if you smoke. Please pay attention. Care about this. Here's Dr. Deal saying that cancer is a disease. We're going to cure it back in the 60s, and we could have. I told you about bacteriophage. Bacteriophage can actually, uh, they, have a, they have developed them, so they attack cancer cells. You can't make any money doing that. You can't patent that. Cheap, $10,000, you cure cancer with bacteriophage. So what do they do? They piggyback, I told you how they piggyback. They piggyback back chemo chemotherapy molecules to deliver to cancer cells to kill the cancer with, which is only temporary because it comes back. But they can make a lot of money off of that and they can patent it. All right, there's Dr. Deal's card, calling card. We were friends. There's the man who died, my former husband, of terrible bone cancer because he decided to keep his prostate. Folks, men, it isn't worth it. I have a good friend, and he and his brother, they're twins. One of them, they both got prostate cancer at the same time. One of them did what I told him to do, get it out. Do not get a biopsy. Get the, get the lump out, you know, if you're a woman. His brother died of horrible bone cancer again. That's what it does. It metastasizes to bone. And here is one of the bacteriophages. Here's one right there. And they attack. They attack. Uh, see, there. look at them. They're like little mosquitoes, uh, I told you. They literally kill the viruses and uh, or cells that are cancerous. OK, so we uh, go on here. I'm going to try and finish. This is the result of poison. And the poor little kids probably, we have, more, we have had a lot of um, success in chemo and stuff like that with, with leukemias. First, because the child is young. Uh, second, because um, basically uh, it's in your bloodstream and your blood, you can exchange the blood. You can get a lot of it out. So there's a better chance that you get healed from that. Okay, we have all these here acquisitions. Here's another the billion dollar cancer deal they've done. They've got something to cure cancer with. It's just not working. 
Okay, here's Nixon decided to gather up all that stuff, including our stuff, and uh, they said they stopped it in 19, uh, in, in the 80s. Well, actually, they say they didn't stop it until 2003, and they actually haven't stopped it yet. I'm almost finished. So this is Fort Detrick. That's my mouse. That's what happens if you have this kind of cancer I'm telling you about. I'm almost finished now. MSM is good for you. Vitamin C, if you get cancer, get yourself inject. I'm talking about IVs, okay? Here, turmeric, resveratrol, and I uh, talked to any. There's, that's my melanoma. Um, I started to take a picture of it halfway through, okay? All right. And these are uh, from my friend Sarah. She's using stuff. Breast milk, two days ago they found out. Why in the world would breast milk cure cancer? Well, it's a long story, but basically babies grow so fast, they have to have regulatory enzymes and things, so that it, it's similar to cancer, they grow so fast. If a baby kept growing, they said from the time it was, uh, you know, just a, a fetus, if it kept growing like that, it'd be the size of the earth in five years. So they have to, they, we have regulatory hormones, and they happen to be in breast milk, and it looks like we have a cure for cancer. Okay, all right, there's melanoma, treated with cannabis oil, okay? I, I'm not gonna say any more, but look at that. I'm finished. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.